Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to model a shield. And we're going to do this by using all the previous tricks and tips I've showed you in the, the past videos. And we're going to go ahead and expand on it and teach you some new tricks uh, for this video. So as a matter of fact I'll probably have to break this into at least two videos, maybe three altogether uh, before we finish it. And it's just going to make you um, probably more than likely easier for you to follow along because this is a timely process and having too much information in one video might uh, just be too long of a video to do. So with that being said, what I'm going to start with, and just like every model I start with, I'm going to import my image plane. I'm going to hit this little button over here and then locate my model, uh, my concept art for my model. And I'm going to start right here. Now, first things first is I'm going to start with a cube. I did not start with a cube, I started with a polyplane. I'm going to start with a cube and I'm going to scale it XYZ something like that. And then here I'm actually just going to go ahead and bring this in on the side view because I don't want it to be uh, just like a standard shield size. Also I'm going to select my um, image plane. You don't have to do this if you like having it in your viewport. That's totally fine also, but I'm just going to turn it on looking through camera. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I already have it on actually, is wireframe on shaded and x-ray. So I'm going to turn on, in my shading, if you don't already have this on, wireframe on shaded and then x-ray. And what I'm going to do next is select my object and go to polycube and I'm going to go ahead and bring these up. Now, we've done all of these things before. Uh, I think maybe six looks pretty good. Six will work. So in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my vertex mode and instead of what we've previously been doing is sort of um, doing everything sort of uh, we haven't really gotten into a, a model that needs to be uh, symmetrical yet that um, I've shown you uh, and this particular model is a good example to do that with. Now, one of the first things, since one of the major things I want to show you is how to mirror and duplicate uh, special an object to sort of mirror what you're modeling on one side onto the other. There's another way you can do it um, that works pretty well, at least in this version so far as I've seen. It was a little wonky in, in earlier uh, versions of Maya, but in this one it seems to be working pretty well. If I hold control and shift and hold right click, I'm going to turn on something called symmetry. Now symmetry, and you'll notice, let me go back, it's right here. I don't want to hover over it for too long, so I'm holding control, shift, and right click. Now if I go to symmetry and turn on symmetry, now you'll notice it says symmetry object X, and in order to change your symmetry on the X axis, Y axis, or Z axis. So since I'm in my front viewport, I know the X axis is what I want to uh, be mirroring. And you'll also notice that uh, these highlight blue when it's symmetrical. When it's red, like you see here, if you can see that, uh, that is not symmetrical. And obviously, it doesn't have anything to s symmetry because it's in the center. There's nothing on the other side of it because it's directly in the middle. Now, if you go over here, these do, so these will turn blue. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to just um, put these into place and it looks like I can sort of do a little bit Ooh. and when I highlight these actually I forgot to mention uh, clicking and dragging over them is better because then you'll get both of the um, models vertices because there's one on this side on the front and there's also one in the back now the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm just going to continue this process. I'm going to put this one somewhere in the center here. And again, these models do not need to be perfect. Uh, we are learning um, just to keep that in mind in case um, you feel like you're struggling or having too much trouble or something. It's not a big deal. This is um, actually rather difficult uh, software to learn because it's so much 
different than any other software we've ever used. There's three different dimensions. Um, we learn, typically, most of us learn uh, using computers with like Microsoft Office, you know, typing programs, things like that, where this is uh, a far different um, style of program that we're accustomed to using or gr uh, grown up kind of using. Um, so anyway, I'm only following this side of my reference. And what I'm going to do is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add in some features. Now holding control, shift, and right click. I'm going to turn off symmetry for now. I did find that it does work just fine um, keeping it on when you do this. It's just an old habit of mine to turn it off because in older versions of Maya, uh, when I would go to extrude inward, uh, it would not work very well. It wouldn't work correctly, in how, if you will. So what I just did was I highlighted all these and I uh, scaled them in. Nothing we haven't learned yet. And what that does is it creates this uh, proper edge loop I need in order to um, start to create some of this geometry it looks like I need because this looks sort of inset this part of the shield where this is uh, these little outer um, outlines here sort of look like they're bevel or uh, extruded outwards. So I'm going to extrude these outwards. Press W and I'm just going to go ahead and expand that out just slightly and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do that one more time for the inside of my model because I want to get this part in here also. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude and I want to make sure that I have proper topology while doing this. And it looks like in here I will need to adjust some of these vertices. So I'm going to hold control shift and go here and turn on my symmetry. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag down. I'll maybe drag this one up. Oh, over, a little upsy. There we go. And I'll get this one. And I'm just sort of pushing and pulling these verts into place where uh, I feel like they should be. And I'm putting it on the outside of this part of the sort of beveled out um, shield here. And then go ahead here. And I think this one will need to come down. And then we'll go here. And that'll work. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to turn my symmetry off. And I'm going to press R. And sort of just scale this in. something like that. I think that's a pretty good uh, fit there. And the next thing is I'm going to highlight this edge loop. Clicking one, then holding shift and double clicking it will highlight the entire, entire edge loop. I'm going to extrude one more time. And then I'm going to bring this one out and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to turn on my wireframe mode pressing four. And I'm just going to sort of bring it out like so. Now, so far, it's so good. We have a pretty cool shape coming out along with our shield. Uh, it has some uh, really simple geometry. We're going to need to add more geometry here soon. Um, but one of the things is, is uh, I've also got additional details in here that I would like to have on the model itself. Uh, as for our um, eagle friend emblem here, we're going to texture that one on. We will texture that on. However, these bolts, um, in video games, in low poly video games, something for like a Nintendo 3DS, uh, or, you know, something that doesn't have as much um, power as like, let's just say an Xbox One, PC, um, PS4, even the, the, uh, the 360 and PS3 probably could, depending on the game and how much information is in the game. Um, but typically, I want to anyway teach you how to get these bolts modeled in. So we're going to start getting into cutting into our own geometry. We're going to combine some objects. And the before we close out on this video, we're going to go ahead and place these little um, cylindrical 
uh, bolts in place. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to cut this video short and I will show you how to do the rest of it whoop, in the next one. So, whoops, make this 90 degrees. I'm going to just flip it perfectly at 90. And in my attribute editor, I'm going to go to my poly cylinder. I'm going to change this to 8. And I'm going to also change the height. I'm going to turn on round cap because I just picture these as a round cap. This has a round cap. I'm going to add a couple subdivisions. And I don't need any in height. Maybe two. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's at three. So something like that. That'll work. And then I'm going to scale it down. Oops. Say like 0 0.1. Just see what that looks like. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And then W. Let's bring them out. And let's see what it looks like in here and see what the scale is for it. I would say 0.1, maybe 0.2. Let's see. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. 0 0.2. I'm going to do 0.15. Cut it right in the middle. There we go. That looks right. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift I. I'm going to delete these faces so it's just this part and then I know the pivot point seems out of whack at the moment but we're gonna fix that in our next video for the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it on my left side and I'm only gonna add these bolts to the left side alright so holding control and D will duplicate. So if I do edit duplicate, you'll see control plus D. So that's all I'm doing. So control D and then I'm going to hold shift and just drag this into place. And I'm going to press control D again. Oh, and one more thing before I do that actually you'll notice that I have these too far out. So I'm going to actually, before I finish this video out, excuse me, I'm going to take this one, and what I want to do is I'm going to adjust my pivot point um, because this is actually a really useful trick. I'm going to hold D, and I'm going to hold V. This is really, really essential to get this uh, placed properly. I should have mentioned it earlier. Uh, I wanted to show you how to center pivot, um, but I'll show you how to center pivot in just a moment, but hold D and hold V, D as in David and V as in Victor, and I'm going to snap it to the edge. What D is, it allows me to, it enables me to change my pivot point, and holding V allows me to snap to vertex, which in this case I want it to snap to these ones. And now, from here, what I'm going to do in my side view. I'm going to hold V and bring it in here. Okay. And what that did was it made it flush. You can't see it yet. With the flat surface of the model. And now I'm going to go ahead and place these all into place. Holding Control plus D or Edit Duplicate. Both do the same thing. Control D, and I'm going to go ahead and drag these into place. Control D, drag this into place. Control D, drag this into place. Control D, drag this one into place. And Control D. And this one I'm going to snap. I'm holding V, and I'm going to snap this directly to the center. And then I'm just going to go ahead and ooh, drag it down. So now I know it's perfectly center. I know I'm slightly off on the concept art, but that's okay because um, it's concept art. Now, I've got all these bolts in place. 
All right. From this point, I'll show you how to combine them into the object, and then also we're going to mirror this model on the left side, and we're going to mirror it onto the right side. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to cover some uh, extra tools. In this video, I don't think there's anything that we haven't learned before. Maybe the pivot point shift, but um, other than that, it's all uh, things we've done before. So, I will cover how to duplicate special, which is technically mirroring an object, and that's what we're going to be using it for. I will show you how um, to flip an object uh, so it is mirrored. And we'll cover some other tools and adding geometry and combining objects as a refresher also. This one's a slightly more complicated way to um, do that, but you'll see in no time that it's not uh, too difficult. So that, with that being said, um, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video and we're going to cover all these extra tips and hints uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching.